All right, folks. Uh, it's uh, six o'clock. I want to welcome everybody to the Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 regular meeting of the Glen County Mainland Planning Commission. This meeting is being held via video teleconference. The public has simultaneous access to the meeting. The meeting will be streamed online for public viewing through the Glen County Board of Commissioners Facebook and YouTube pages. Commissioners, remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Staff will control the PowerPoint presentation. Please do not scroll or control the slides on the screen during the presentation. So the first thing I need to do, my fellow commissioners, is I'm going to call the roll. Commissioner Boatwright. Commissioner Clark. Here. Commissioner Dawson. Here. Commissioner Gibbs. Present. Commissioner New. Present. And Commissioner Strickland is here. Janet. I think Janet's here. <laughs> Steffi. Here. Maurice. Maurice. Sorry, I'm back. I was helping. Uh, <laughs> I was helping with the technical issue. All right, you're excused. Matthew. He's out there somewhere and Mr. Mumford. So Present. we're all here. All right, the planning staff presents the application request to the planning commission during the staff's report. This report evaluates how the proposal conforms to the Glen County zoning ordinance and other applicable regulations and conforms to the comprehensive plan when applied to zoning matters and ordinances. Applicants shall have the opportunity to present their request to the planning commission. It is the responsibility of the applicants to make presentations on request and to address any conditions or factual findings with which they do not agree. Public hearings, public comments on public hearing items will be limited 30 minutes for each opposing side with a maximum of five minutes allocated to each speaker. So the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held August 3rd, 2021, subject to any necessary corrections. Mr. Chairman, I offer a motion to approve the minutes of the August 3rd, 2021 meeting. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Gibbs and a second by Commissioner Clark. As I call your names, say yes or no. Commissioner Boatwright. Commissioner Clark. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner New. Yes. And Commissioner Strickland, yes. So there's five, five yeses and two not present. Is that we good, Stephanie? Chairman. Yes. I would like to also add my vote of yes to that, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Daryl, I just, I'm sorry. I just. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All right. So the public comment for the site plan approval, the comment may offer comments on the site plan approval agenda item in the following way written public comments on the site plan approval applications can be submitted by 12 p.m. on Tuesday, September 7th, to the planning zoning at Glen County GA.GOV or to the Community Development Department, 1725 Rental Street, Site 200, Brunswick, Georgia, 31520. All right. All right, folks, the, this is for SP 4771 Enclave Phase 2B. Consider the site plan approval for the construction of a 204-unit apartment complex at 1500 Glencoe Parkway, parcel 03-14371. This site is zoned Planned Development District ZM 3393 
J.K. Hightower, Roberts Civil Engineering, agent for Wayne Moxley, Cornhouse Creek Holdings, LLC owner. Maurice? Yes, sir. Maurice Postal, uh, Glen County Planning and Zoning President. Uh, move it to the next slide, please. Uh, the applicant's requesting site plan approval for the construction of a new 204-unit apartment complex at 1500 Glencoe Parkway. <clears throat> uh, the Enclave at Gateway Center PD allows for a total of 398 dwelling units within the PD, and there currently are 192 existing units in the PD. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> uh, here's the zoning map showing us directly to the east of the current Enclave apartment complex. And here's the site plan showing the uh, new 204 apartments. Okay. Well, yeah, here's the uh, elevation showing a three story building. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I talked to Superintendent Spence, and he said that a new 204 unit apartment complex would not cause a burden on the schools in this project's uh, attendance zone, which I believe is Golden Isles Elementary. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we are recommending approval of the application and uh, the owner's agent, Jake Hightower, is here tonight to answer any questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Maurice? All right. Will the applicant please make his request? Hello, everyone. Jake Hightower, Robert Civil Engineering. Can you all hear me all right? Yes, sir. Good deal. Yes, sir. I am asking for approval of the site plan for Enclave Phase 2B and here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Maurice, was there any public comments received by the citizens? Uh, no, sir. We didn't receive any public comment on this item. All right, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Make a motion to uh, approve SP 4771. Approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Clark to approve. Do I have a second? I second. We have a second by Commissioner Gibbs. All right, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Boatwright. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Commissioner Dawson. Commissioner Dawson. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner New. Yes. Myself, I vote yes. Commissioner Strickland. All right, Commissioner Dawson. I don't know if we've lost Commissioner Dawson. I think he's still on there. I think, he, you know, he took a minute, so I don't know if he's back. Yeah, he, was, he was back because he, he, he approved okay. the uh, minutes. All right. So we have uh, four yeses. And Commissioner. Yes. I, I'm at the Howard Pate building. Okay. So you, all right, Neil, you're here. Yes, did sir. You hear, did you hear the uh, site plan? How yes, you, sir. How do you vote? Yes. All right. Commissioner Dawson. All right. So we have five yeses and two that are not present. All right. Public hearings, zoning decisions. The public may offer comments on the public hearing agenda items in one of two ways. Written comments, email written comments to planning zoning at glencounty-ga.gov. These comments are sent directly to the board members and will become public record. The deadline to submit written comments is 5 p.m. on September 6. Verbal comments, members of the public may come to the public comment kiosk at the Harold Pate building located at 1725 Reynolds Street, Brunswick, Georgia, 31520 at 6 p.m. on September 7th. The county will have a Microsoft 
team connection set up in the building for persons wishing to participate in the public hearings. Social distancing will be practiced. ZM4783, 1181 Lake Drive Rezone. Glynn County initiated request to rezone 1181 Lake Drive, parcel 03-09308 from in, excuse me, M12 zoning district to MH-12 zoning district. Glynn County applicant. Maurice? Next slide, Stephanie. Uh, Chairman Strickland stated this property is located in M12, one family zoning district. The only uh, mobile homes permitted in M12 are double wides that are at least 20 feet wide. Uh, the property owner, Mr. Carl Teston, is requested to move a single wide mobile home onto the site, but single wide mobile homes are not permitted in M12 zoning, while they are permitted in MH12 zoning. The property owner had already purchased the single wide before realizing they were not permitted in M12 zoning. At Commissioner Tostenson's request, we uh, attempted to make contact with other people on the street that were in M zoning, but no one else was interested in joining this uh, county initiated rezoning. Next slide, Stephanie. Uh, <clears throat> here's a zoning map showing Mr. Teston's property, and you can see some other properties along the street that are also in this M zoning, which only permits double wides. Uh, next slide. Uh, this site and nearby properties on the street, the street Lake Drive, are located in the medium density residential land use category of the future land use map. Uh, the comprehensive plan stands, states that medium density residential generally defines areas appropriate for moderately dense single family residential development. And uh, the other map in the comp plan, the mixed, the uh, character area map, this property is in the mixed use area of that map and the comprehensive plan zoning analysis for the mixed use character area lists practically all kinds of zoning districts that are allowed in mixed use, including all kinds of residential zoning districts. Uh, next slide, please. Um, these are your options, of course, to recommend approval, approval of conditions uh, or denial. And I believe the property owner, Mr. Teston, is in the uh, public comment room in the paid building. All right, thank you. Maurice, commissioners, do you have any questions for Maurice? Maurice, the only question I have is you you reference on the, the information we have about that this came about because there is a storage room or a storage facility on that property. Has that been moved or is it, or will it be moved? Uh, code enforcement contacted Mr. Teston about a couple weeks ago, but code enforcement has been really short staffed over the past two weeks for, you know, what's going on in the world right now. And I don't know right. that they've been able to contact him again on that, but they've definitely advised him of the problems on that parcel. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for Maurice commissioners? All right, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in support of this application, ZM4783, please come up and state your name. Hello, my name's Carl Teston. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm the man that wants to get this rezoned. Um, I is here to answer any questions, and I would also like to point out that, uh, that there's like a, there's, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the ruling for the zoning is on visual representation or <clears throat> how it looks compared to the, the rest of properties around it. And, and in that case, there, there is, um, places that are zoned for, for something else. And, uh, it also that piece of property is also located on a private road um that's it is kind of messed up it's got whole potholes i don't know um <clears throat> what i'm trying to say is i'm i'm not uh doing anything i don't think that anything i could do would uh mess up the um, visual representation of the neighborhood i also have that trailer park that's 
is just one street over right next to me slap full of trailers and campers and whatever what have you um but i'm here to answer any questions you have all right sir thank you any questions for the applicant commissioners mr teston this is sherry gibbs and uh the question i just had asked maurice has to do with the the storage unit that's on the property the uh, yes ma'am i've uh i had a lot of junk on that lot and i've um i've already removed a whole bunch of it and i still got a little bit more to take off um but as far as um i got little homemade connexes i built little eight by eight little shed that um i don't think that do, is is that something i need to get rid of that it said that it was it was your outdoor non-conforming outdoor storage uh uh what was you know didn't you know that code enforcement was talking about that that wanted to get you to correct that situation yes ma'am and they were when i talked to them they they told me to work on getting all that junk out and i've uh there's still a little bit left but i for the mo most part i've got most of it gone okay any any other questions for the applicant commissioners all right sir thank you anyone else wishing to come forward and speak in support of this application anyone wishing to come forward and speak against this application commissioners there's no one else in the room all right sir thank you ken ken Hearing none, seeing none, commissioners. Commissioners, I mean, I need a motion. Commissioner Strickland, I'd like to make a motion to accept this proposal. I have a motion by Commissioner Boatwright to accept. I have a second. Second. Who made it? Commissioner Clark. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. All right, Commissioners, Commissioner Boatwright, how do you vote? Commissioner Boatwright, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Still no Commissioner Dawson. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner New. Yes. Commissioner Chick Strickland. Yes. So we have five yeses and two not present. All right. ZM4774, Southern Storage Plan Development District Rezone. Request to rezone approximately 13 acres located at 3600 Highway 82, parcel number 02-00513 from Forest Agricultural and Local Commercial to Plan Development District. The proposed PD includes a rental storage facility, storage for recreational vehicles and boats, and an on-site manager's residence. Brian Hunt, Robert Civil Engineering, agent for Jamie Souter, G excuse me, JCS 345 Properties, LLC, owner and applicant. Maurice? I'm oh, sorry, Steffi. That's quite all right. Good, <laughs> evening. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioner. Stephanie Leaf, Planning Manager. This is ZM 4774. This is Southern Storage. It's a planned development um, request. Uh, so currently the property is in Forest Agricultural and Local Commercial. Um, there's a small corner of the property where a billboard is that's local commercial it's located adjacent to gary lee's um, meat market and here is a map showing where the property is where the star is located uh, here this is highway 82 uh, this is the railroad tracks behind the property uh, gary lee's meat market is next door in this local commercial area 
And some of you that were on the commission a couple of years ago may recall uh, there was a previous application for this property for Flint equipment. And that was a reason to, uh, to commercial to allow Flint equipment that did not pass at the county level. Um, and that was a couple of years ago. So a few of you may remember that project. And so their proposal is to do um, self storage, so a retail storage facility, as well as uh, storage for recreational boats and um, I'm sorry, recreational vehicles and boats, and then also have an on site manager's residence. And they will have they have submitted for a site plan approval, uh, but they currently are on hold working out some comments um, with the county's development review team. So if this does um, get approved by the board of commissioners, the MPC will see this site plan at a future meeting. Uh, so a couple of things, the comprehensive plan uh, future land use map um, does show this property as low density residential and uh, the map reflects an intent to retain a residential character of the area. Uh, so this will be a commercial use in this area. Uh, there's also a character area map, uh, which Maurice had uh, talked about in his last project as well, which is another map in our comprehensive plan. Uh, this is in the Southwest Glen character area, area which does encompass a very large area. Um, and they really call out for an, a number and a variety of zoning categories. Um, so the character area does allow a little more flexibility. Uh, they do talk about commercial development, serving the needs of the residents, and to service traffic at the I-95 exit 29 interchange. And this is a, just an excerpt of, um, from part of their plan development text that's proposed, just showing what this property would be used for. So if they do uh, get rezoned to plan development, it is a very, very specific use. Um, it would only be for the mini storage, offsite commercial parking, open storage, warehouse, and onsite manager's residence. So it would be limited to those uses. Um, if anyone did want to do a different use down the road, uh, they would have to come back before the county to request an amendment to the plan development. So this is their, um, currently their proposed um, site plan, which um, for the rezoning, it, there's only a sketch plan that's required. So this is a little more detail than we, we might see typically with a sketch plan, because as I mentioned, they are working on that site plan as well. Um, but they are showing, so here's Highway 82 right here. Um, they are showing a landscape buffer along Highway 82. They're proposing um, another buffer along um, this uh, side of the property, that would be a, a 12 foot type A buffer. They have a detention pond for stormwater. And then this is their proposed layout um, for their climate controlled storage and their storage buildings. And these are your um, proposed, or I'm sorry, your possible actions. So recommend approval, uh, recommend approval with conditions, defer or recommend denial. And at the time of this meeting, uh, we did not receive any written public comment on this application. And I'm happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Brian Hunt from Robert Civil Engineering is um, online to represent the applicant. Stephanie, any questions for Steffi? Stephanie, you referenced that we looked at this property lab in the last couple of years. But that was that that was a rezone to heavy commercial or highway commercial. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that was correct. They were rezoning to uh, requesting highway commercial, correct? Right. Okay. And so so this this is not the this is not the same. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the staff? All right. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I have one. I know it's already on, but what kind of residence are they looking at? A trailer type or a, a fixed home? Or what were they looking at or have they decided? Steffi, did we know? Uh, Commissioner Clark, that's a good question. I do not know the answer to that, um, but Mr. Hunt um, for the applicant may, may know more details on that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the staff? All right. Will the applicant please, Mr. Hunt, please come forward and state your name. 
Hello, commissioners. I'm Brian Hunt with Robert Civil Engineering, and um, yeah, I'm happy to present this project. It's going to be a good project. So the on-site manager's residence, to answer that question, will be in combination of the office, probably either an upstairs apartment or a back apartment or something that would be probably associated right there in that location. It wouldn't be like a separate home that's built on it. It was going to be a part of the of the building. My understanding is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Any questions for Mr. Hunt? Mr. Hunt, this is Commissioner Strickland. Uh, I noticed they're going to be there's going to be a septic tank on the site. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. There's no water and sewer at this location. Um, it would be we have that. If you look at the bottom left corner of that screen, we've got ample room for a um, for a septic drain field that we'll be able to connect. It's just a matter of getting the the correct soil test back, um, which we've ordered, and we're just waiting on that to be returned to verify that that is an adequate place for storage. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hunt, I know this is a retention pond, and I know right there on 82, there's a very large ditch, and I believe on if you're looking at the property from the front, how close are you to that other big ditch that runs from basically, you know, um, Brunswick River and goes under 82 all the way to Stella? I mean, is it something that y'all would, uh, you know, the retention pond is probably going to be uh, very costly. And uh, I'm just wondering if we got very large ditches in front and on the right side looking at it. You know what is the purpose of that? Uh, what looks to be a fairly big uh, project digging it out. I just curious it, it, your it, thoughts on that. It is. It is a fairly large project. Um, so uh, another thing I just wanted to, uh, to clarify. So part, one of the things that um, Mr. Souter is looking to do is they're going to do this in phases. This what because this is a very this is a very large project and it's going to be very costly. So this will be built in phases, but as opposed to having him come back and forth for site plan approval, you know, every six months or a year when he wants to add a few buildings, we just show the 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 the, the end end product uh, so that he would you know be able to develop as the business grows and as time starts. His initial his initial um, investment will be in the in the front, a few with the RV and a few with the um, one of the the climate control buildings as well as the office. Um, but this, with regards to the detention, there it's bordered by the railroad track, so we're kind of limited as to the 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 access for that property to that very southern portion. There is a drainage dish that goes through that's pretty um, pretty large. It probably has ample capacity. We just wanted to show that we're going to have enough room to be able to maintain the detention that's on it. We haven't done a a, a, a hydro study yet, or we haven't done any um, drainage analysis for this project because obviously, if we don't get through the rezone, then it's there's no sense in wasting Mr. Souter's money. So what we're doing is, you know, in phases as well through the through the the development is, you know, we're, we're going to look at that next and start seeing really what the detention is going to have to be. That is a very large detention pond and it's probably way oversized for the project, but we do have a lot of um, impervious material as well that would when it's finished, you know, he may need quite a bit of storage. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant commissioners? All right. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. All right. This is a public hearing. Anyone in the at room 224 to speak in support of this application? Hearing none, seeing none. Anyone in room 224 at the paint building to speak against this application? Hearing none, seeing none. Commissioners, I need a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the proposed excuse me, zoning decision as presented. I'll uh, second. second. Was, was that you? Was was it Neil or Missy? Missy Spicer. Okay, Missy, you 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 won out. Okay. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Boltwright. Yes. 
Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Yes. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner New. Yes. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. Six yes, one not present. Thank you, commissioners. ZM 4776, Capitol Square Plan Development District Rezone. Request to add a parcel and amend the plan development district for parcel number 03-03351 and 031244. Parcel number 03-12444 OS Teakwood Court is approximately 16 acres and currently zoned forest agriculture. And it is proposed to be added to the Capitol Square PD ZM 4310 to allow commercial and multifamily residential. The existing PD ZM 4310 for parcel number 03-03351 130 Capitol Square Drive and the additional of parcels number 03-12444 is proposed to be modified to allow mixed use throughout the PD. The PD currently separates the location of commercial and multifamily residential. Brian Hunt, Robert Civil Engineering, agent for Kenneth Ross and Cameron Owens, Ridge Enterprises Incorporated and Georgia Land Group Incorporated owners and applicants. Steffi. Thank you. Stephanie Lease Planning Manager. This is ZM 4776 Capitol Square. And uh, as the chairman mentioned, they're incorporating, requesting to incorporate some additional property into their plan development, as well as um, really kind of amending their master plan to allow flexibility of the commercial and the multifamily that's already allowed on the remainder of the PD. So this is the property um, and within, I think it was within the last year, uh, you all would have seen a another amendment to the Capitol Square Plan Development. They had added some additional property um, to, to the PD. So this is the property where the star is located. Um, that's the existing PD. And then the other star on the green area, that's the existing forest agricultural zoning. Uh, it's adjacent to the single family lots. And that is the property that they're requesting to add to the PD. So uh, in the area that's the existing PD, this is where they would have the flexibility to have commercial or multifamily really anywhere within this property. So to give them that design flexibility, and then within the, the green area that they would add to the PD, this would allow um, a highway commercial, freeway commercial, um, or multifamily um, also anywhere within this um, 16 acres. And, um, and let's see, um, a couple things on this that I'll show when we get to the sketch plan. Uh, they are proposing a because there would be multifamily and commercial um, on what is currently forest agricultural adjacent to single family in the sandalwood subdivision um, they are proposing a buffer of 40 feet for commercial 20 feet if the development is residential and uh, the compliance with the comprehensive plan so the future land use map uh, from the 2018 comprehensive plan does indicate that this area um, is commercial. And so the commercial land use can be a mix of higher density residential uses or commercial. So this um, this request does um, is in compliance with the comprehensive plan. So here's an uh, just an excerpt from their proposed PD to show uh, what would be allowed. And so um, they would have the, the highway commercial, freeway commercial, and um, the multifamily. And the multifamily would be 16 units per acre. So that is the same as what our medium, um, our medium density residential is. And this is their proposed um, master plan for the PD. So this is uh, the existing PD here. Uh, so if you're familiar with the site, this is at exit 38 
and uh, the majority of this property has been cleared. Um, there's a large lake that is right here. The um, La Quinta Inn is the newest development that's um, kind of closer, closer towards Perry Lane, adjacent to the property. Uh, this is where their 40 foot type E, or I'm sorry, type B buffer is being proposed along this side of the single family. And then for the FA property right here, this is where they show a 20 foot, 20 foot buffer or a 40 foot buffer. Uh, we did receive some uh, written public comment uh, prior to this meeting. And primarily the concerns um, were about, you know, kind of what's happening next door to the single family property. There were some concerns about drainage. Um, additional concern about possible multifamily or commercial next to a single family. Uh, and also additional concerns about the drainage and uh, potential access into this property. So these are uh, your possible actions and uh, staff has recommended a suggested condition if it is the board's pleasure to recommend approval with the proposed condition uh, because a number of the public comments that were received um, really had concerns about the adjacent commercial multifamily and potential access that would come through the Sandalwood subdivision. The suggested condition is recommend approval of the proposed zoning decision with a condition that vehicular access on South Teakwood Drive is emergency access only for commercial and or multifamily development and a transportation and infrastructure plan is required prior to future development. And I'll just go back to the map um, just to show where that access is. So adjacent to the currently FA property, uh, at the end of this cul-de-sac, South Teakwood Court, there is um, an access right here. So the property does touch this cul-de-sac. And so the concerns are that, that people that are coming to the multifamily or commercial will potentially come through this single family neighborhood to access that. And so that's where that condition about this being emergency access only would come from. And I'm happy to answer any questions. And Brian Hunt from Robert Civil is representing the applicant. And he's online tonight. Thank you. Steffi, um, I'm, I'm confused. Didn't we just rezone this property a year or two years or some time back? Yes, they they did add some additional property to the plan development. So, um, so yes, yeah, some of this does some of this request does um, really apply to use this, to the same property. So, really, for the existing PD, the only change really, I mean, all the uses stay the same. They're allowed. They're allowed now. They're going to be allowed under the proposed PD. Except um, what they do is add flexibility. So right now there's pods within this PD that say within this pod you can only develop commercial. Within this pod you can only do multifamily. And um, you know, as the developers and the, or the owners are looking at different uses, they'd like to have more flexibility. So that's really the only change to the existing PD. Um, but this additional FA property um, has not yet been added to the to the PD. But you're you're correct. They've they've kind of made a couple different amendments sort of adding on um, additional property. In the last year, wasn't wasn't one of the this is Commissioner Strickland wasn't one of the issues the last time this came before the Mainland Planning Commission was that all the traffic was going to be dumped onto Perry Lane Road and was Perry Lane Road able of able to handle that much additional traffic? Yes, sir. Yeah, that that was a concern with the last project, and and it remains a concern. Um, that's why it. With this condition, I have suggested a transportation and infrastructure plan is required prior to future development. Um, so, you know, if it is multi, if it's, if it's multifamily and commercial, um, you know, the site plan will be coming before the MPC at a future time, and that's really where we would um, you know, hammer out these transportation issues. But it is a significant concern. I mean, this is a very, very large piece of property, and the current access, um, you know, currently doesn't, you know, would not meet. Um, county codes. There would definitely need to be improvements made on the property for it to be able to, um, you know, service 
a, a large development that could potentially go out here. Um, so that, that would really be taken up mostly at site plan, um, unless there's additional conditions or concerns that you all want addressed at this point in time. How, I, know, I know this will be addressed in the site plan approval, but how, how many homes are they looking to put in this? I, I can't remember what it was from last time. You know, I know for the for the FA property that's being added in, like that's a 16 acre property. Um, and so I think we're at over 200 units potentially if they do the 16 units per acre. Um, and I do not know offhand about the existing. Mr. Hunt may, may have a number um, that they've been looking at. But I'll see if I can find that if he doesn't know the answer to that. Yeah, so the on the on the on the FA track, if it's rezoned, they're looking oh, at. Oh, hold on, just one minute, Mr. Hunt. Let me. Is there any other? Is there any questions for the staff before Mr. Hunt steps up? Commissioners, no questions for staff. Okay, with the applicant now introduce themselves. Go ahead. Sorry about that, commissioners. Brian Hunt with Robert Civil Engineering. Um, so the the 16 acres that they're looking at for the on the FA track. The owners are currently in in negotiations with a, a a developer who's looking to put a multifamily development there, um, and I think they may add an extra acre to it. We're looking at 272 unit apartment complex right now. It's not deal's not done. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that could happen between now and closing. So um, that would be the the that's the only planned multifamily development. And if there was going to be a multifamily development on this parcel, that's probably the best location for it. With regards to the South Teakwood, there's no intent on connecting to that. There's no intent on using it. The county will require that we maintain a um, emergency access there, which we're more than happy to do. We can maintain emergency access in the event of the the road getting a tree falling over the road and so they got to get access in there um that's going to be part of the design uh with regards to the the perry lane the road um we understand that as the development comes as you know because there's going to be other parcels that will be sold that they will have to do a traffic study for that for that project and if there's upgrades that needs to be done that, that those would be taken care of um, one of the things that we're currently doing is we're designing the road that's going to come from Capitol Square and connect to that multifamily development, and it's going to be a commercial road with curb and gutter and store all the storm storm pipe and drainage and inlets that's going to be able to handle it as well as water and sewer extension that's going to come through to service any of the the, the properties that come online. One of the comments Joint Water did have during the initial um, our initial rezone of this was that they wanted the water and sewer to connect for that multifamily development onto Teakwood. So but that that road on Teakwood, there is a um, there is a um, there's a utility easement through there. So we have we have ample room to get in there. They got um, they have capacity to be able to serve the development. Mr. Hunter, are there any plans to put any single family residential units in there? Not at this time. There's not, no, sir. But there, but there, you're in negotiation. This, I'm sorry. This is Commissioner Strickland. Yes, sir. This, uh, their plans for a 200 and something apartment. 274 unit apartment complex. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay, commissioners. Any questions for the applicant? Brian, this is probably, and uh, this is Sherry Gibbs. This is probably an unfair question, but uh, you said this is this is someone else who wants to build this to build this apartment complex. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So currently, as many of y'all know, this is it's undeveloped land. I think the owners that came through, they cleared it, grubbed it, rough graded it. They built a detention pond. They had a master plan for development for um, everything with exception of that FA track. However, since it's cleared and grubbed, 
um, they've had some, some interest in, in some people that are looking to purchase that property and do a, a multifamily development. I don't want to give too much out at this point just because it's not, I, I, I probably would be speaking out of turn. Um, however, just from my communication with them as the, the, with the potential developer, as well as the owners of this property, um, it, it is, it's going to be a really nice development. They just built a, an apartment complex, very similar in Amelia Island, and they're going to duplicate that here. Um, I just can't give much more information other than it will be, it'll be apartment. If, if everything goes as planned right now, that it would be, um, it would be a very nice development and it would be, um, it would really serve Brunswick well. Thank you. Mr. Hunt, this is Commissioner Strickland again. Can you give us any idea of what kind of uh, what they're looking at as far as the road issues on Perry Lane there, if this development comes to fruition? I mean, Perry Lane is just already a, a mess. Yeah, so it, it it is. I think that, um, you know, that's I go grocery shopping there on Winn Dixie. Uh, that's just south of my house. I understand that there are issues there. How we improve that's another. That's another issue. Um, as Capitol Square comes in off Perry Lane, it kind of used. I've looked at some areas of maybe how we can improve it. Um, there's a you know we have to sit down and get all the bright minds together and try and sort this out. You know it to serve 274 units. That's really not a lot in the grand scheme of things. You know, we add apartment complexes all the time and it's not really any added stress on the road. I know that one is an issue, um, but I don't know. I think we'll have to just kind of sort that out. If Obviously, if this deal comes to fruition, then we're going to have to cross that bridge with um, the developer as they start doing their site plan. They're going to be required to do a traffic study and we'll have to figure it out. I know the road that we're going to design coming through the property up to Capitol Square is going to be sufficient, but how it, you know, from that point on, it, it gets a little, it gets a little muddy. All right, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Clark. Uh, yes, sir. I dropped off for a couple of minutes and y'all may have already discussed it, but like Commissioner Strickland said, we got Winn-Dixie, you got two cans, you got several hotels, and I know Logan's was there and Capitol Square as it is right now, fantastic place, but the impact of, uh, you know, just put an apartment there and then we're going to come at it later on with a fix for Perry Lane. You've got a lot of residential folks that transit through there daily and it's a it's going to be a uh, you know, that's kind of approach I'm not comfortable with and I don't know about I'm just speaking for myself that we need to maybe, you know, fix that or have an, a plan in place and uh, you know, but I'm the development Capitol Square as is, it's great. I like it. But, you know, one of the problems when Logan was there, um, restaurant, you had to meander through there. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a big impact for Perry Lane and the residents out there. And I just, you know, I wish we had answers for that before we go and, you know, start talking about apartment complex. And I, I like single family in there, just like the other. But anyway, but that's just my my take on it right now is, I mean, we need to look at this maybe a little bit more. Thank you. Mr. Clark, that, you know, you had, a, you, you bring up a great point. The current zoning has, it's, as it's already zoned is allows for the, the, for 270 plus units that could be developed in there, you know, without any of the rezoning taking place. Um, the, the part of this rezone is to add to, to, move it more strategically where it might fit better in a development. You know, obviously as um, as the owners have started to develop this site, you know, there's there's been a lot of interest in it. Um, with regards to the to the the traffic impacting, like I I you know that's the issue we face all over when we're doing development. Um, you know, how we resolve that at the rezone is it's hard to it's hard to say. I think that there's there's like you said, there's not really a good answer in it just because um from a from a from a from the engineering standpoint, we have we have a developer who's looking to develop some land. 
but they're also really cautious. You know, everybody's real safe with their money, the, especially these days. You know, if it's if they got to go through the rezone, they don't want to spend a lot of the money on the engineering and the traffic plans until the until the rezone is done. But you know, especially on a property like this where it is a large piece of property and there is potential for many other developments that come in. Um, you know, I, I, I think the best answer is that we approach it at site plan. How do we, you know, it's what the, what is going to be the use, what is going to be um, the traffic impact and how we, how we address from that point, you know, is the road is right now, the road is what it is, you know, coming out to Perry Lane Road. It, it, I mean, it's not the greatest. I get that. Um, how we fix that. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's not there's not a great answer to it. Um, if if we came through if we came through the remainder of the property or the the property that's to the south, that's not even it's not our property. But if somehow we negotiated the deal, that's going to come out on Cape Road, but that's still going to dump out on Perry Lane. It still all ends up on Perry Lane regardless. Um, but I you know I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how we how we solve it at this point until we get um, a little bit more of the, the plans finalized. Thank you. Mr. Hunt. Yes, sir. I got a, I got a, uh, just a few simple questions for you. Um, if this gets, Neil. Uh, yes. Commissioner Strickland, go ahead. No, I was going to say introduce yourself so he knows who's asking. I did. I'm sorry. I I'm said sorry. I was Commissioner that right. <laughs> I apologize. Um, Mr. Hunt, if this gets rezoned tonight, it doesn't guarantee that a, a high density apartment complex is going to be built there. That's correct. There's, as I said in the beginning, there's, they're, they're in negotiation with it. They're, they're in talks. Um, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, pretty sure this is going to happen. You know, it, it is waiting on the rezone. Um, that is the, the one main thing that we got to get, get accomplished first. You know, absent this, it's not going to go in. Um, but it, you know, this is this is one of the many steps. I mean, a, a lot of things could go in at this point. Okay, and um, if it does get passed tonight, the traffic issues will have to be alleviated or the developer cannot move forward with this project at some point, either the, the Mainland Planning Commission or either the County Commission will have to be satisfied with the engineering for traffic. Um, is that correct? Well, I mean, that is correct, but I think that's true with any development that we do. There's typically a request for a traffic study on on most projects that we do. Um, the way it's currently zoned, I mean, there's there's already, I mean, it, it, even though it allows for the for if, if that if we weren't even including that FA track and they wanted to build next to one of the hotels, they could have done that and there would not be um, we wouldn't have to go through rezoning on it with exception, um, but they would still have to do a traffic study. That would be a request by the county. That's one of the typical requests that we get. That's the point I was. Yeah, well, we get these all the time. Yes at all tonight they're still oh, have if they build that's correct if they build residential houses in there there will have to be a traffic study yes sir that's they, correct oh yes sir if they built waffle house back there they're gonna have to do a traffic study alleviated at some point the traffic going on the perry lane road will have to be taken care of yes sir that's correct there's a lot of property there that at some point is going to be developed yes sir Not that's this, correct only track that's left to be developed there. Is yes, that sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So I I don't see where the commission, my colleagues can make a decision on a future traffic study. Um well if we don't give you this proposal tonight, if we don't vote for it, this pro this is dead. It's, it's just not going anywhere. Is that correct? This, the the potential project that I discussed with you would not go anywhere. That's correct. But the the remainder of the property, yeah, that could still continue with storage or um, tractor supply store or whatever they wanted to put back there, or multifamily on the other portion of it. I don't have a problem with it. 
I, I think Glen County needs more high density apartment complexes. We don't have places for regular people to live in Glen County. It's the reason why my people that I hire in my business have to come from Brantley County, Wayne County, Bacon County. They come from all over except Glen County. And you ask them why they can't move to Glen County and they say, I can't afford to live there. So we need more high density projects in Glen County. But I get the point that I'm trying to make is all you're asking us for is a redesignation of property. And that's not going to guarantee that that's going to be built there. There's a lot of other hurdles that have to be gone through to make this work. Correct? Yes, sir, absolutely. There's a, there's a ton more hurdles we got to get through. This is a very small step of it. I, th I think as a commission, this is my personal opinion, I think we get caught up in stuff that we can't change, this commission. I can't, Commissioner Strickland, Commissioner Clark, we're, none of us can do anything about the traffic. The traffic is going to be fixed when the people that fix traffic are forced to from a development that's going that's going to be built. They're going to make it work. There's traffic engineers that's a whole lot smarter than we are that can make that work. And you, you know, I'm I'm for your development. I just I, I just wanted to make that point that just because we vote to rezone this tonight doesn't mean that it's going to happen. And we just need to take that in consideration. This Thank is you, the Chairman. step to a process to get this development done. And th thank you, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for the applicant commissioners? All right. This is a public hearing. <clears throat> Anyone in the Pate Building Room 224 that wishes to speak in support of this application? Commissioner Strickland, I'm the only person in, in this room. OK, are you for or against? I'm all for. I am for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Neil. All right. All right. If you're the only person there, anyone wishing to speak against? Hearing none, seeing none. Public hearing is closed. Commissioners, I need a motion. Commissioner Mr. Chairman, okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve ZM4776 as proposed. I second. Yes, sure is too. I have a motion by Commissioner Boltwright to approve and a second by Commissioner Edge. To approve and a second by Commissioner Edge. No, Commissioner Gibbs. No, Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Commissioner Boltwright. Commissioner Boltwright. I, I'm sorry, I got a technical difficulty. Yes, Commissioner. I'm sorry, I got a technical difficulty. Yes, Commissioner. All right, Ken, can you do anything All about right. this feedback? Can you do anything about this feedback? Okay. All right, Commissioner Boatwright, yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Dawson? Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Yes. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner Gibbs. New. Yes. Yes. New. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. There are six yes and no, and one non-present. All right. Moving on to ZM 4778 Fancy Bluff Plan Development District Rezone. Request to rezone a portion of parcel 02-009051 and 255 Fancy Bluff Road from the Forest Agricultural Zoning District to the newly created Planned Development District. The proposed PD will have a separate areas for marina, restaurant, and recreational vehicle park. Brian Hunt, Roberts Civil Engineering, agent for Cameron Auburn, Rock Owens, 
Spoonbill Landing LLC owner. Maurice? <clears throat> yes, sir. Maurice Postal Landing and Zoning again. Uh, Stephanie, next slide. Uh, the overall 138 acre parcel has been in forest agricultural and conservation preservation since the zoning ordinance was enacted in the 60s. Uh, this particular rezoning site is a 55.6 acre site and it only includes a portion of the parcels FA zoning and that's south of the railroad tracks. None of the parcels area and CP zoning or anything north of the railroad tracks are including it, included in this rezoning. And the applicant is requesting to create a new plan development that has separate areas for an RV park, waterfront restaurant, and a marina. Next slide. And here's the zoning map showing the uh, property and the areas where the stars are are the areas of the uh, parcel included in the rezoning. You can see the Colonel's Island terminal to the right and uh, the Tilla Shores south of the site. Next slide. Then this is the master plan for the proposed PD. As you can see, most of the uh, area of the PD is going to be the RV park, and in the southeastern section of the PD, it's going to be the restaurant and the marina. And uh, <clears throat> this site is in low density, low density residential on the future land use map, but it is in the mixed use area of the uh, comprehensive plans character area map that we've seen for a couple, uh, another site tonight. And a uh, mixed use area lists freeway commercial, highway commercial, medium residential, and conservation preservation as appropriate zoning districts for this character area. And the uh, permitted uses included in the proposed TD are allowed in one or more of the previously mentioned zoning districts. Next slide. You know, we did receive two written public comments. This first one was included in your agenda. A nearby resident along Fancy Bluff Road was in approval of the project. Uh, next slide. And the uh, second residence also, uh, also along Fancy Bluff Road and also is in approval of the project. Next slide. Uh, and these are your options, of course, approval, approval of conditions, deferral or denial. And uh, Mr. Hunt, of course, is the uh, applicant for this project as well. All right. Thank you, Maurice. Any questions for the uh, staff? All right. Mr. Will the applicant come forward or will the applicant uh, make his request? Commissioners, I'm still Brian Hunt and I'm with Robert Civil Engineering and I do appreciate y'all's patience tonight and um, we do ask that you approve this as presented. Any questions for the applicant commissioners? All right, once again, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in support, come forward. Hearing none, seeing none. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition, come forward. Hearing none, seeing none. Public hearing is closed. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve ZM 477 4778 as presented. 4778 as presented. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Commissioner Clark has made a motion. To approve, Commissioner Dawson has second the motion. Commissioner Dawson has second. Commissioner Boltwright. Commissioner Boltwright. Yes. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Yes. Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Commissioner Do. Yes. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. There are six yes and one not present. All right. Staff, you have anything else for the Mainland Planning Commission this evening? No, sir, I do not. Thank you. All right. No, sir, I do not. Thank you. All right. All Commis right. Commissioners, thank you all so all much. Right. Uh, I think for the most part, well, uh, all of you stay safe. We'll see you next month. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you.